This is going to be a statement. This is not an apology video because I feel like I've issued too many apologies here on YouTube and in private and furthering that sort of discussion is just gonna make me seem insincere. And also because it's not my viewer's place to accept any apology I make that's entirely on the people I negatively impacted and they already said that they don't want an apology from me but for me to be out of their lives entirely. What I want to do here is set something straight, say my piece, and hopefully move on from this because I feel like I've let this go on for long enough and there's already enough rumors being spread about that I'd rather not perpetuate any further. For those who don't know, I've been accused of being a child groomer for being in a relationship with someone under the age of 18 when I was 19. I said before that I wouldn't talk about this again and I really wish I could have been true to my word on that but the rumors just keep on piling up and I still get death threats for something I wish I could have been able to put behind me and I really needed to take a step away from it all to fully realize how ridiculous everything is. As you may know, I live in Germany and age of consent laws are a little different here than they are in the United States as you're not considered a child anymore when you turn 14 and that's the environment I grew up in. I've had people in my high school dating 15 year olds when they were 19, just like my ex and me. My mom dated her 18 year old boyfriend when she was 14 and no one ever batted an eye on that. And that's the fact for most of Europe. A lot of those comments accusing me of being a pedophile say that I'm only making this up or that this is only the case if both partners are under the age of 18 because this is the first thing that comes up on Google. But officially, the age of consent in Germany is 14 as long as a person over the age of 21 does not exploit a 14 to 15 year old's lack of capacity for sexual self-determination, in which case a conviction of an individual over the age of 21 requires a complaint from the younger individual. Being over 21 and engaging in sexual relations with a minor of that age does not constitute an offense by itself. Which is a lot of fancy talk to say I was entirely within my right to have a sexual relationship with someone of that age. Which I did not have. But because it's the first thing on Google that means it must be true and it's really tiring trying to argue with people like that. Now because I knew American sensibilities are a little different, I did try to keep my relationship a secret because I really didn't want people accusing me of being a pedophile, but that is exactly what happened. I'm still being called a pedophile for it over something I did when I was a teenager, and I can confidently say that is not the case. I never exchanged nudes with anyone. I never had any sexual conversation besides weird Rule 34 shit you can find on most every Twitter timeline. I never met up with my partner. Literally nothing happened and I'm still being called a danger to kids or that I'm trying to lure in fans by making cartoon videos, which I'm pretty sure only stems from the belief that just because I make videos on animation that means all my fans are underage when you can simply look at my analytics and realize that is not the case. So there's that. As far as me being a groomer goes, well I already said before that it's not a fair term to use and it did nothing to change anyone's mind, so let's look at the definition, shall we? Child grooming is befriending and establishing an emotional connection with the child and sometimes the family to lower the child's inhibitions with the objective of sexual abuse. Child grooming is also regularly used to lure minors into various illicit businesses such as child trafficking, child prostitution, cyber sex trafficking or the production of child pornography. Nowhere in all my conversations with my ex did I ever make any sexual advances toward them. I fully admit that exchanging Rule 34 with them was extremely irresponsible of me but I genuinely didn't think anything of it at the time. It was long before we started dating and never did I ever have any intentions of having our relationship become sexual. They themselves had an NSFW Twitter account at the time which led me to believe they were overage and even they themselves said the images they shared were nothing more than a joke to them. So I don't really get how you can go from sending Rule 34 to someone who has an entire account dedicated to sharing Rule 34 to thereby grooming them by sending them stuff they already share around themselves. I just really don't get it. Now granted, I did learn of the age eventually and in hindsight, it would have saved me a whole lot of trouble had it just backed away at that point. But from my perspective, living in a country where the age of consent is as low as it is, I saw this as a consenting relationship between two people and since even their mom was okay with us dating, I stopped questioning the age difference after a while. And yet the internet keeps misconstruing it as a groomer victim scenario when by that logic, you can say the same thing about any relationship with an age gap like the one we had. I hate that I have to bring this up so much. This is not a comfortable topic for me and I am in no way excusing my country's laws when it comes to that, but 
Please, I ask that you try and understand where I'm coming from and that I wasn't trying to hurt this person by putting them in a situation they were uncomfortable with, but that this was an entirely consensual relationship from where I'm standing. And frankly, it's a bit narrow-minded to disregard other countries' cultures just because that's not how you grew up and came to see the world. Now, because I don't want this whole video to be me deflecting blame, let me be clear that I was not a good boyfriend to my ex. I expected way too much of them, I made them undercharge their work they did for my channel mascot, which I have since retired because they said it gives them panic attacks and I don't want to worsen their mental state. I publicly called them out over very minor mistakes and I stalked them when I couldn't get over them. On top of the rule 34, these are some severely terrible decisions I've made and I won't deny the damage this has likely caused, which I can't hope for my ex to ever forgive me for. When I started dating this person, I was still very new to relationships and I convinced myself that they were the one for me. I wasn't actively seeking out minors, I was interested in my ex because they were talented. Their age was a concern for me at first, but I genuinely thought it would work itself out once they turned 18. I realize now that was not a healthy mindset to have. I shouldn't have gone after them after finding out their age and I do recognize that there is a power imbalance there. But I was not attracted to them because they were a minor, they were not a fan of my content beforehand so I didn't use my platform to go after this person and I especially didn't seek out any other minors like I'm being accused of. I say this because I still see people accuse me of trying to groom Alice Mark, which I'm not even supposed to talk about because he said he wanted to be left out of the drama. Yet, he also didn't stop Daft Pina accuse me of trying to groom him, which is the very definition of defamation, so I'm sorry, I need to address this. That screenshot you saw in Daft's video where Mark was 16? That was a curious cat question. Not my words, but someone else's. They literally put words in my mouth, and I've already talked to a lawyer about it, and yeah, I definitely have a case against Daft if I wanted to go through with that. In Daft's video you can see Mark approaching me about whether I had a crush on him when he was 17, but I never would have approached him about that myself had he not asked me himself. Him and I spent hours every day talking to each other around that time, we shared a Discord server together, and we were really close, but I didn't want us to get too close either, as I knew it would only make things awkward between us. So I only told my ex about it after we broke up, which, again, was not a nice thing of me to do. But does that mean I was trying to groom Mark? Absolutely not. I was the reason he even got into cartoon videos. I wanted to see him thrive, not because I was grooming him, but because we were friends. <laughs> now please don't approach Mark about this situation because, like I said, he wants to move on from this, but don't go throwing around the term groomer all willy-nilly either. I've had people compare me to people like John Kay, like actual genuine predators, because a poor decision born out of a different worldview due to cultural differences when I was still a teenager is totally the same thing as a 40 year old man being in a sex relationship with a 16 year old. Get fucking real. And to be called a pedophile over a minuscule age difference, a child groomer due to something I sent as a joke years ago, is slander at best and a witch hunt at worst. Because realistically, does anyone who calls me these things actually care about the well-being of my ex? Of course not! So long as there's someone to call names and tell me to get help under a video where I specifically stated that I was in therapy, and so when they finally made their own video I thought there was gonna be some big thing to be revealed that would make me reconsider my stance on everything because I don't always know how I come across, but no. It's all things I've already admitted to and assumptions about my intentions without ever reaching out to me because I'm already a pedophile in everyone's minds due to videos where they get the age of my ex wrong. But an even shorter version of it is that he groomed multiple minors, one being 14 at the time. Say I groped someone that came my way. Oh, hey, guys, um, I groped the child. Huh, what? Call me a child molester, accuse me of trying to groom Mark, or insinuate that there were multiple victims when I literally only mentioned that girl I sent Animal Crossing to because I was afraid that's gonna get misconstrued into me trying to groom her as well. I'll monetize, by the way, to really show you how much they really care about the victims. I'm not gonna go through each of these videos individually because one, some of them do raise some valid points and I've already left comments under them with my stance on them, and two, I'd rather not further the drama. That's not what this video is about, that's why I don't want you to go after Mark, because I feel like those are differences that should be settled in private. And I only brought him up because of this false notion that I tried to groom him, so I had to explain the real nature of our friendship. So this whole narrative that these commentary channels are spreading that I'm some kind of predator because I wasn't a good partner 
is really fucking disgusting. I was suicidal, it's put me in a mental hospital, I had to start taking antipsychotics because I couldn't handle it all by myself, and every single person I've ever known on this platform has turned on me. And that's not because they don't agree with my actions or genuinely think I'm the things I'm being accused of, but because they want to protect their precious brands and know that if I genuinely try to groom someone, it wouldn't look good on them if they were to keep associating with me. But I didn't groom anyone. And if you genuinely wanted me to get help, I'm getting it. And my therapist agrees with me. He encouraged me to make videos again. And either our whole worldview is fundamentally flawed or I just don't know what else to tell you. And I'm kind of tired of arguing with a faceless mob because it's not getting either of us anywhere. I know what the comment section under this video is going to look like. I've seen it happen with all my posts that pertain to this. I've seen the hashtags. I've seen the mob mentality that's come from people who most of those using the hashtag don't even know who I am, telling me to leave the platform because I'm manipulating my fans. But as all of this and my lack of success in swaying public opinion has hopefully shown you is that I'm not some masterclass manipulator of these kids because I do agree there's a problem with genuine predators on this platform. But I didn't make my post because I was trying to emotionally manipulate anyone. I was making them because no one was ever willing to listen to me. There wasn't many people I could turn to after all this, so I acted on impulse a lot. I deleted this whole channel for a bit. Same with my Twitter. But any time I came back, it only added fuel to the fire. And as much as I enjoyed stepping away from it all, it's really a testament to the mindset this whole site is in that I literally have to disappear in order for me not to be considered a danger anymore, rather than me coming forward with the story in the first place, saying that I regret my actions, that I am getting help. And I said before that I wanted to be held accountable, but this is not what that looks like. Spamming the comment sections of videos I spent months of my life working on, sending me death threats, saying I'm a danger to kids and that I can't get back on YouTube. That's cancel culture. People would rather see someone fall than to see them get back on their feet. And I know because I've definitely been in that mindset before. That mindset of making up my mind about a story I know little to nothing about, going with whatever public opinion is out there. So I know how little what I have to say really matters at the end of the day. I could have opened this video saying I'm getting help and the comment section would still be the exact same. If someone, just anyone reached out to me after all this, willing to hear my side of the story, I wouldn't have needed to scream into this voice but they didn't and so I kept driving myself deeper and deeper into this hole there was just no getting out of. And I wanted to make it go away so I kept changing my approach trying to find the right words because I'm really not great at apologies either. But whatever I said it kept getting twisted one way or the other but I couldn't stop and the moment I realized I genuinely needed to step away was when I started deleting comments. That's when I knew this wasn't healthy for me. And I think a big mistake I've made in the past and the reason I'm in this mess now is I would listen to the things people would say about me, assume they're true, and then apologize for them even though what I was apologizing for was already so far removed from the facts. That's why every apology I made felt so insincere and fake because I didn't even fully grasp what it was I was apologizing for. I know now that what I'm sorry for isn't me being a sexual predator because that's not what I am. What I am sorry for is me being a full-on asshole to those who are close to me. That's what I'm sorry for and that's what I'm in therapy for. I'm not trying to make excuses here or victimize myself because I was a terrible partner, I was a terrible friend, I lied about my relationship, I handled everything so extremely poorly and these constant attempts at apologizing didn't do me any favors because I just came across as disingenuous that way. As I said before, I needed substantial help, especially with my obsessiveness and I feel I'm finally at a point where I'm stable because I look at these videos calling me out and I can finally look at them a objectively and say, holy shit, what a waste of human flesh this person is, and I just don't want to be that person anymore. From the stalking, to the just seething rage I had within me for whatever reason, to the way I fucked some people over, all because of my own mental problems that I in turn turned into theirs, there's just no excuse for that. This isn't a parasynical or a pro-Jared situation either, where everything was carefully laid out to make me look worse than I am, because I did make some very bad decisions. But I'm not a pedophile, I'm not a child groomer, and I will do everything in my power moving forward to prove to you that that is not the case. I've already talked it out with my therapist and he feels that I should go back to making videos because he's seen me at my lowest and knows that I'm only ever truly happy when I'm able to work on something and that I can't truly get better if I don't have YouTube. 
as sad as that sounds. But the last thing I want is for anyone to feel unsafe due to my presence on the internet, so I will take some more time to keep to myself and keep my social media interactions to a minimum. More videos will come in due time, no more videos like this, I promise, even though I know they're everyone's favorite type of content. I just wanted to make this video first because I feel as though enough time has passed that people can hopefully see things from my point of view and understand that I'm not doing things to hurt people. And because my initial response was very poorly thought out, I was literally recording it whilst going through a mental breakdown and really romanticized my relationship with my ex, which wasn't fair to them at all. It's really disgusting listening back to it. I've also made the mistake in the past of directing a post or a video towards a specific person, hoping they'd see it, but this is literally just me saying whatever comes up in my head. And me getting all this out because I've had enough time to ponder everything and I want to let you know that I understand now what exactly it is I've done wrong and that I've taken the necessary steps to improve myself. I stopped trying to reach out to my ex or Mark or anyone who doesn't want anything to do with me anymore. I've kept to myself. On top of a regular therapist, I've also talked to a sexual therapist to make sure everything's okay up there. I donated like a year's worth of ad revenue to sexual abuse charities. I will never date anyone underage anymore, which I know huge achievement. And I'm continuing to seek other ways to improve myself because I don't want to hurt people anymore. I want to make fun content for people because that's what I'm passionate about. Not doing so has made me more depressed than I already was. And I've said it before, but even just having one person who finds worth in what I do makes it all worthwhile. I'm not really sure at the moment what direction I want to take with this channel because I'm not exactly welcomed in the cartoon community anymore. <laughs> but I also have a new job now where I deal with retro games a lot, so I might even cover some games that I enjoyed. We'll see what happens. At first I wanted to wait a year before I come back to see more genuine, but I feel like that's the cliche thing to do and it would also look like I'm just waiting for the hate to die down. But if you want to hate me, that's totally cool. I've definitely made my fair share of poor choices, but I know now that those don't have to define me and that I can grow from them. So if you want to stick around for that, I'd really appreciate it. I wish nothing but the best to my ex and Mark and anyone else who negatively